What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Epic 7 video here on Fort Missouri Gaming and today guys I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video about four to two days and it's actually been even longer since I recorded one But anyway, we are here Sorry, I do get really really busy on the weekend times this time of the year So I apologize for that for all you loyal subscribers and viewers out there But we are here today to finally bring you my thoughts and discussion about the packs for equipment and are they worth it your money are they good to buy whether you're a new player existing player if you're a dolphin if you're a whale so on and so forth um, and i'm going to go into detail of how i view them on the game how i view them as a player so on and so forth so let's go ahead and hop into it so first of all i will say these bogo packs are really really good i would say definitely three dollars for six leaves and 100 sky stones is a steal i would definitely pick that up if you have three dollars at all to spare <laughs> i would definitely pick up that um as far as for bogo pack one this is a very good solution to you guys who are struggling for bookmarks and sky stones for the upcoming collab i have a feeling that's why they put this in here it gives you guys a little bit of leverage to hopefully pull those collab units so obviously you guys only have until the 26th I believe we are going to get the collab details on the 25th, at least for the first banner character. My thoughts is we're going to get the first banner character on the 25th and then the following one two weeks later. So you guys can kind of weigh the option. You guys will have only one day to decide whether or not you are going to want to get this pack. Um, I myself is going to depend on how much farming I use for my Sky Stones for the next week and a half if I'm going to get this pack or not. Um, and how many bookmarks I have up until then right now I have like 450 or so So I almost on just bookmarks alone and get the collab hero and I have 25,000 sky stones So it just depends on how much sky stones I am going to use and if I really want to chase dupes if the units are that game breaking with a devotion skill All those kind of factors go into it. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother story. So let's go into the equipment pack. So Here we have equipment pack one which is going to cost $30. You are going to get five uh, Pieces of gear one of them will be guaranteed epic but however guys keep in mind they are not guaranteed to be the set you are i'm sorry they are guaranteed to be the set you want so for instance if you want a speed set if you want a destruction set attack crit uh hit set health defense all that stuff unity immunity all the new stuff you can even get as well however you're not guaranteed on what your substats are going to be you are not guaranteed on what the main stat will be if it's a right side gear that you randomly will get. And as well, you're not guaranteed what type of gear. Typing meaning you're not guaranteed if it's gonna be a sword, a helmet, a boot, a chest piece, a necklace, or ring. So all of that is RNG. So first of all, I'm gonna give you, spoiler alert, my answer is no, they're not worth it. They're not worth it for your money, in my opinion. They're not worth it for your gamble on RNG. And they're not worth it for the sky stones stamina ratio when we compare them to leaf packs. Now, here is where I'm coming from. So, if we go into the Leaf Packs, guys, and we're going to use Leaf Pack 2 as an example, you are going to get 22 Leafs and 450 Sky Stones. So, when we take that away, we can basically take away 450 of the 900 Sky Stones that you guys see here on Equipment Pack 1. So, I'm going, only going to compare these from the 30 to, um, 30 to $30 ratio because we don't have a $50 Leaf Pack. So... I'm just going to compare it at that rate there. So now when we go into um, leaf, another leaf pack, we now see that 22 leafs, you guys, if you guys do the math on that, you get 80 stamina per leaf. It costs 20 stamina per run. You guys are actually going to average around, uh, you guys are going to average 17 pieces of gear in total that you guys could get from a full leaf pack from just the leafs, not the sky stones. And how, how that works out is you get, I would say, every five runs, which is almost one leaf per run. So I rounded it down even, so I took away basically five of, of the leaves here. Basically, every seven t every uh, for 22 leaves, 17 to 18 runs, um, or 17 to 18 equipment pieces, you will be able to craft from just the crafting materials. This is not counting the RNG if you guys get a lucky drop for a very, very valuable piece of 85 gear um, on the runs themselves. I'm only counting crafting, because crafting straight up, you can craft boots, you can craft uh, swords, you can craft chest piece, and then you can craft helmets. So here, guys, you guys are only able to get, I don't know why I'm using a cutout. <laughs> here you are only able to get five pieces of gear, that's it. That You're only getting five, you know you're only getting five. So the thing is, what if you really only want boots? What if you only really want swords? What if you only run chest piece or helmets? 
In crafting, you can pick what you want, straight up. Granted, here you can pick the set, and so there is a little bit better RNG there, but I would say on average, the fact that you are getting more than triple equipment pieces for the leaf pack of farming, plus on top of all the other random drops you're getting in the runs, your gold is basically going to equal out your crafting costs. Um, if you can't calculate the stigma you get that you can get from selling penguins, and then on top of the gold you get per the runs, it's basically going to you're basically going to use up all the gold that you would to craft all of those pieces of gear. So I'm not going to calculate that like uh, you're getting the excess pieces of gear for fodder and stuff like that because you may even have to sell um, crap gear that you get on runs that drop in order to get those pieces of gear uh, to craft all those pieces of gear from all the leafs and runs you're doing. So in that retrospect, guys, it's just better to get leaf packs. Now, the only thing I would say is different if you are lucky enough in these packs to get accessories. If you do get accessories and they happen to go your way. So this is a big, big, big gamble with RNG that if you really want it, you can go for it. But keep in mind, you are not guaranteed any accessories. You're not guaranteed any right side pieces of gear. And you're not guaranteed that then if you get those pieces... You then have to see if you get the right main stat for a right piece of gear. You then have to see if you get the right sub stats. That is so much RNG that you are gambling on for this amount of money that I honestly feel they're not worth it. No matter what other people say, yes, yes, you can get incredibly lucky. You could get 10 necklaces and they could all be amazing. But the likelihood of that happening is like almost like winning the lottery. Um, it's insanely, insanely rare. That's like, you know, pulling a... You know, a Moonlight Rule or a Moonlight Ken off of your first or your first Moonlight Summon after clearing 1010. Like, that's how the RNG really is. And I would say, honestly, you have a better shot at pulling a Moonlight Ken uh, than you will of pulling perfect gear pieces in a pack. Like, sorry, it's getting 10 out of 10 or 5 out of 5. Um, it's just, it's insanely rare RNG. In my opinion, I think your money is better spent getting definitely Molagora pack, I feel, is the best pack period. Besides the Christmas packs that we got um, that came back for Guild War, which we probably will see the same thing for this collab. Um, the fact that because in those packs you get Molagoras, you get four to five star tickets, you get Moonlight Summons, you get Leafs, you get Sky Stones, you get Gold. All that stuff is like crazy, crazy valuable. Um, and who knows, they, maybe they're going to throw equipment in now for these packs as well. You never know. Um, we'll have to see what they do. But in any, at any rate... The Mulgore pack that we get every six weeks or every five weeks or so is just more insanely valuable because you know for a fact, okay, I'm getting nine Mulgores to improve my characters that I'm going to use. Straight up. There's no RNG involved with that. There's no anything you got to worry about. It's like, okay, I got Moonlight Aramitha. I guarantee I'm going to get her S3 where I want to that 10% effectiveness. You know, you're going to get that cooldown on your on your Lunas, you're gonna, or not your Lunas, <laughs> you're going to get that cooldown on your Tamarine, you're going to get that cooldown on your Angelica, you know, whatever units you're, you're, you know, building at the moment, you know that value is there, where these, you don't know that value is there, you, you really don't, you could get completely screwed, and here's what I'm going to show you, a screenshot of exactly how someone got screwed, um, I found this on YouTube, you guys see here, five swords, doesn't matter that they are, you know, speed. Doesn't matter if the substats were amazing. The fact is, this guy was more than likely going for accessories and boots. And he got zero, zero. I want to emphasize that, guys. He got zero boots and accessories. That can happen to you absolutely. Do not think that your RNG is completely unavoidable for this to happen. So I really wanted to bring that to you guys' attention so you guys are aware that... No matter how enticing these are and what other YouTubers, a certain demon might say to you that these are amazing and they are what you should buy every time they come out, I think that's completely false information. Um, the only way I would say that remotely these packs are worth it for a whale is if it's a whale, like a certain run whale in our Discord um, doesn't have the time to farm, then maybe this is your only alternative to get good gear for your heroes. But... If you're a content creator or if you're a you know avid player that you play anywhere from three to eight hours a day um you know obviously you can round that out per week some some days you may be able to play all day some days you only may be able to do your dailies you know it all depends on your life and your schedule um but if you're able to farm leaf packs are better you get more value out of that um you know if we ever get a 50 dollar leaf pack i'd like to see what the value will go up to there that's why i didn't compare the 50 dollar one i specifically compared the 30 dollar one um anime impact um or i'm sorry josh josh verse 
uh, did make a big Reddit post on this as well. But I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I think back then he didn't know for sure how the RNG was going to be with the set type or if it was going to be a you pick the actual uh, type of gear. Like you can pick all booths or all necklaces. I don't know if he knew that at the time when he recorded his video. Um, I'd have to ask him about that one more time. But I will post his link. Um, to his Reddit post that he posted that where he made his video. So you guys can check that out as well um, in the comment section. Um, but that's just what I really wanted to bring up to your attention, guys, on this, um, of the value-wise on it. So now going forward, the last topic I want to talk about with these whole packs in this video is are these packs bad for the game? I absolutely think they are because for one point, and it's going to be short and to the point, is that basically these take completely out of you wanting to play the game basically the whole point of this game um obviously is to farm is to build characters is to compete in guild wars compete in pvp is to beat abyss towers is to beat your hell raids your normal raids all that stuff right but if you're completely taking out the whole farming aspect of the game that's what a gotcha game is if you guys don't like farming then gotcha games aren't for you that's just how it is or go play a gotcha game that's severely paid to win like dogon battle um or dragon ball legends or something like that uh, those kind of games are more built for summoning, they're built for the whales, they're built for the companies to make massive amount of money. Smallgate still makes a ton of money, they are one of the top grossing uh, gotcha games on the market right now. But the whole point of this game of why a lot of people and why to me this appeals is I love farming. I love, you know, constantly using my heroes, I love constantly doing new things with them. So, and I love that this game has so many different heroes and aspects to the game that no one hero is the absolute best unit overall, period. Like, ML Ken is not that great for endgame PvE. Um, you know, Angelica is not the greatest for Guild War and PvP, so on and so forth. You know, you can go down the list of how heroes differentiate. You know, Tamarine is not good for PvP or GDG if she doesn't have a Seria. So, there are so many different characters that I feel this game is taking a big portion out of that. It's like, oh, I don't have to farm Wyvern anymore. Oh, I don't have to farm Golem. Oh, I don't have to farm Banshee. You know, so on and so forth. That this takes a big part out of the game. And Small Game needs to realize that you need the free-to-plays and you need the pay-to-wins. Like, you need both. And if you take out the free-to-plays, and they're just like, oh, we don't want to play the game anymore because all the whales are just going to buy these packs. And if they get really, really lucky and get OP gear, then, you know, it could take me months to get a pieces of gear like that. So I feel this is a really bad move for them on the game overall. Um, I still don't think they're worth it, in my opinion, even for whales. Unless, like I said, you're a whale that has no time to actually farm. Um, is the only reason I would say this is, is super, super beneficial to a whale. Um, but if you guys are content creators and whales, you know, kind of similar to myself. You know, I'm a, I'm a semi-whale, I would assume, to a dolphin level. Um, then you guys definitely uh, will just be better off farming and plus the fact is for a content creator specifically when you farming when you're creating content whether you're streaming or making videos that's more potential revenue as is just buying these packs and then doing one showcase video you know for a unit that you bought a lot of packs for so anyway guys that's going to be my whole two cents on this whole topic i hope you guys all enjoyed i know it's a little late coming out but i wanted to touch base on this um my whole overall thoughts of the packs good bad ugly good for the game bad for the game situation if you guys did enjoy today's video, don't forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new as always. And if you did enjoy today's video, share it out with all your friends, buds, all that good stuff for Epic 7. And until then, guys, this is Fort Misery Gaming. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next Epic 7 video. Peace out, guys.